What's up guys? We just got an order for a thousand keychains that we have to 3D print, add NFC tags to, and program. So I thought this was a perfect chance to show you my filament respooler so we could take one spool and split it into multiple spools so that way you can save money, making money, and 3D printing. Let's get into it. All right guys, so that is right, a thousand pieces for this order. So we went to the store last night, bought all the different colors. There's four colors for these keychains, black, white, silver, and green. So we bought a few rolls, but we have a bunch of different printers that we can start the prints on, and we have to make the most out of our filament that we have right now. So doing so, I built a filament respooler that I found on printables. I'll get to that in one second, but I also wanted to show you here my huge stack of uh, plastic spools that I've saved and then I also have some uh, bamboo ones down here at the bottom guys make sure you save at least a few of the plastic spools in case you do print one of these uh, filament respoolers and actually make it so then that way you have some stock that you can use for the next time when you go to respool some stuff so let me go ahead grab one or two from the tower here and we'll get to respooling all right, and for these, I actually chose the bamboo specific rolls. I'm gonna run the prints on uh, a few P1Ss and an A1 Mini. So I wanna just use these rolls. I think it'll be the easiest to use as it's the actual spools that come with the printers. So let's go ahead and get some filament on here. All right, guys, and here is the roof spooler itself. This end is the spool that either has the remaining filament, and then this side is the spool that has all of the filament that you're winding to. Don't mind the messy desk. I tried to clean it. I just don't have time because I have to get started on this order, but I wanted to make a video, and I'm sure those creators out there know the struggle. Anyway, I'm going to put the full roll right here and then basically put these rolls here so then that way I can split it into two or three rolls. So let me go ahead, get it loaded. But as you can see, these are just running on like some bearings here and then these little spindles uh, screw apart. So then that way I can just put the filament roll here and then also same thing here. Uh, the thing with this one is it has a gear on this side and it has to fit into this little uh, other gear which is driven by a motor and then you just plug it into USB-C and then it'll start spinning and going on. So let me go ahead show you the whole process of you know putting it here filling the filament through and let's do it. All right so I got my gray spool and then also this is the holder that I want to use for it. Some of these threads are actually reversed so when it is being unrolled it's not going to get too tight and all that. So I'll just put the one side in here, flip it over, and then put in the other side, and then uh, spin reverse. And then now it gets tight, just like that. Once it gets tight, you just throw it back right on here, like so. Just going to make sure the other side fits in. And then now we got to find our little filament string to start. I just have a PTFE tube right here gonna run it all the way through so it comes out the other end I'm gonna stop I'm gonna get my other filament spool I'm gonna take this side off unscrew it this is the same thing the threads are reversed so when you're going it's not doing anything it's not loosening or tightening so we'll take that off put it in one side here other side here like so and then we'll go ahead and tighten Oh my gosh, guys, just like that, almost done. Let's go ahead and now we gotta feed this little gear into there. Sometimes it can be a little tricky getting the fitment right, but as you see, it just slipped right in. Just making sure it's all nice and tight still. There has been times where I've been running this and then uh, sometimes if it isn't slipping enough, it will actually um, unscrew this. So that's one thing I still have to fix, but for today it'll work. So now, now that I have the filament in here, I'm gonna ring, push the filament through and gonna see if I can fit the little strand through one of these holes. So maybe I should have did that first. So, so first after you put the piece on that holds it, um, then you wanna find a spot where you can fit your filament through I'm just gonna put it in on the side here. Like so. I'm gonna use a little bit of heat to melt the plastic and bend it over like that so it won't come out. <clears throat> I 
Okay, now that it's cooled down a little bit, not flexing too much, I'm gonna put it back in here and I'm gonna pull the filament tight just so then that way once it starts to go through and spool, it's not going to be all loose like I am having to fix it right now. This filament, spool, uh, filament rewinder also works if you have some spools that are really knotted or um, ones that have a lot of cross threading. So if you guys have those issues, it might be worth it to build one of these. It does take a little bit. You have to buy these aluminum extrusions, print all these parts, buy hardware, you know, and also know how to solder and uh, wire up uh, electronics to be able to do the motor. And then I just have a little USB power source here. So let me go ahead, grab the power cord, and then we'll plug it in and get it rolling. All right, so I got my USB, just plugging it into the side here, which is directly wired to the motor. All right, and then now I'm gonna go ahead, flip the switch, and with this one, it takes a little bit to really get the motor moving. Um, so I'm just going to turn it up. And then here we go, it's starting to go. So with this, you just wanna go a little bit slow, make sure your filament is going fine. You can see here, it's starting to unspool. We wanna make sure there's no slack in the line when it's going. So here we're gonna, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and you can see the first couple of spools or strings going. And with this one too that I made, it also goes back and forth. So sometimes, or you're supposed to get it you know, on the left and then all the way to the right. So it, it doesn't cross over like that. Even if it does, it's not really going to be an issue. And then also, since these spools are going to be pretty light with the plastic, for this color at least, I'm not too concerned uh, with it getting caught. I can always fix it or just re-spool it again. Having this machine gives me that opportunity to be able to buy one roll and then split it into two, three, or even four. So four rolls out of one kilogram would be like 250 grams per roll which if you need to take one color, split it up into four printers, you know, at least you could do that. With these keychains being such a small thing, it's not really going to use a whole lot of filament for each one. So, or even for like 30 or 40 of them on a plate at once, it's not going to use a lot because, you know, each layer is so small, each design is so small already. So mind you, this is a tag of the NFC card that I have in the little keychains. I'm going to do a whole video on keychains, NFC tags, how to design them, and all that stuff because I'm loving it. But for now, we're going through the filament rewinder. So let's go ahead, wait for this to, you know, rewind a bit or unload a bit. I'm going to try to get it into, I think, three rolls. I have an A1 Mini over here, and then I have the P1S there on the bottom. That needs gray, and then the one up top that also needs gray. And I do have one over there in the corner that's off at the moment. I just need to take a look at it. It was having issues last time when I was using it. Um, basically, like it would start printing and then it was doing some wacky stuff. Typically, I found that that's due to like the SD card going bad, but I replaced it and it didn't resolve it. So just got to take a look at it, but got to get this order going at least first. And as you can see here, the filament spool is slowly filling up with more and more plastic. So let's see, I can turn it up a little bit more. It's maxed out. Good thing with this, or caveat I should say, is it does go slow, but at the same time too, you don't wanna to go too fast. It would be nice if it just unspooled the entire spool, you know, within a matter of seconds. But at the same time too, with trying to make it a little bit more controlled, it um, gives you the opportunity to stop it when you want to and for it to not go too crazy. So I'm gonna wait another minute or so and uh, check back in with you guys when it's ready to be pulled.
All right, guys, well, you can see here the filament roll is looking pretty good. I would say it's maybe a quarter or almost halfway. And you can see here this one is getting to maybe 75% or closer to 50% in between there. I think that is fine for these little keychains to be able to split it up a few different ways. So I have one, two, and three rolls. So I'm going to go ahead, kill the little respooler here now. I'm going to pull this out so I can retrieve the newly made roll pull it a little extra and then this is exactly where you want to cut so if i can find my snips and we'll cut here make sure you want to uh if you can hold the filament spool or the line uh sometimes with these rolls with, with them being you know wound and then sitting for a long time on a shelf or something they can be essentially like spring loaded so if you don't hold it, you know, uh, it could potentially unspool a good amount on your newly made spool. So make sure you just hold it. A little precautionary thing. You don't always have to do it, but um, just in case. So I'm going to go ahead, pull this off, put the new filament spool on so I can make a third and should be good to go. Getting it nice and tight, pulling some more filament through. While I don't have it in there, I'm just going to... Send it through a small hole, heat it up a little bit, and I'm actually gonna put it in on this side. As you can see, the filament um, director is all the way towards this side. So if I started on this other side, then it's going to really be cross-threaded. So if I started over here, shouldn't be as bad. Mind you too, I don't really use this thing every day. Um, you know, it's just more for uh, having a bunch of spools laying around the shop and need to, you know, don't want to throw them out. Don't really, can't really make like a full project out of it. Uh, there has been times where I have used a bunch of those, uh, sp spools that have just like a little bit of filament left. And I have been able to use or get a lot of, uh, filament out of those. I was actually able to remake a whole spool of filament. So, and then actually use it. So um, I actually have like the little filament connector thing too that melts them and all that. And I've used it to combine multiple. That's how I've created a whole roll, but that's a whole different video in itself. So let's go ahead and start up this next one and we'll see how it does. So here we go, our first little one going on. As you can see, that's working out as, as expected. Put it on the right-hand side there. It was starting on the right-hand side and then now should be pretty good when laying down new rolls. Might get a little messed up, but mind you, no biggie for me. Um, you can always just pause it and fix it. So I'm gonna ha give this one a second and then we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I think that should be good for now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut it here since I am good with respooling on all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead, just put this here and then take this one off, both of these off, and they're ready to go in a printer. So this, this is the whole idea of a filament spooler rewinder. You can, you know, use one spool, cut it into four spools, three spools, how many ever. You can take multiple colors of, you know, uh, spools that have a little bit left and turn it into one big spool again. I have done that before. You can find this print or this respooler on printables. I'll have the description link in the description. Um, I will tell you it was a little difficult figuring out what things to print. So I may in the future do like a build video on, you know, print this and print that because, you know, I, I do kind of want to reprint it with all the different colors and stuff like that. I think it would be cooler to have a little bit faster of a motor in here or maybe use a, um, a power injected USB-C. So then that way, you know, it only takes like five volts, but it really turns it into 12 and can go faster. And then also I got to fix this little gear here because when it goes around at one point, it actually clips on a tooth, but it works. So that's what we're about around here. Functionality, getting things done. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's video with that. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the support and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.